Hey there, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about using Markdown within TickTick. So if you've ever had the need to bold or italicize some words in your task description, um, or if you've ever wanted to maybe organize maybe a more complex task description uh, using headers and bullets, or especially if you're using notes within TickTick, you're going to want to know about Markdown. Now, what is Markdown? Well, Markdown is a lightweight, easy to use uh, way to format plain text using symbols uh, that you type in with your keyboard. Now, primarily it's used, I've seen it used in text applications. So if you're familiar with Obsidian, or even if you're familiar with just using plain text, maybe a notepad, it's a way to format text files in a way that is still readable if you're only viewing the text file. But for us, using TickTick, it's really just keyboard shortcuts to help us format our task and note descriptions. So let's jump in and start looking at some examples. All right, I'll start by just creating a new task within my inbox. All right, so over here on the right side, this big open area is known as the task description, and that's where we can use Markdown to format. So in a lot of cases, we will just, you know, write some text here. All right, so that's just plain text, but let's say we wanted to italicize one of the words, right? So let me just rewrite that same sentence, uh, but let me italicize one of the words. So let me start here. Let me italicize text using Markdown. So to do it using Markdown, I'm going to type an asterisk. You'll notice that the dates pop up because this uses the same syntax, kind of, that some of the other uh, functions within TickTick -tick use. So an asterisk is used to pull up dates in TickTick, -tick, but we can just ignore that for now. And let's go ahead and type our word. And then we'll type another asterisk on the other side of that word. And now you'll notice that once I type that, the word becomes italicized, and also the asterisks on both sides become a little bit darker gray to kind of blend in more with the background. And then if I hit the space, you'll notice they go away altogether. And all that's left is our italicized word, which is what we want. So this is some text that. And let's say we want to bold the word task. We can do it in a similar fashion, but instead of using one asterisk, we're going to use two. So two asterisks, typing the word, two asterisks on the other side. You'll notice the word becomes bold. Uh, the asterisks become dark gray. And now I'm just going to type a period. And all that we're left with is the bold word. And so that is a real quick and easy way to get started using Markdown within TickTick -tick, is just to use bold and asterisk. It's just, <laughs> it's just to use bold and italic, and you do that by using either one asterisk or two. One asterisk for italic, two asterisks for bold. Now the other quick and easy way to get uh, started using Markdown within TickTick -tick is to use bullet points. So I'm gonna enter down here, and there's a couple options for syntax uh, when making bullet points, but my favorite is just the dash. So I'm gonna type a dash and space, and that becomes a bullet. And so that's Markdown. When I hit enter, by default, it just brings the bullet with it. I don't have to retype that dash. Uh, the other option is to use the asterisk again. So if you type an asterisk at the beginning of a line, space, that's also a bullet. So again, those are three really easy ways to get started using Markdown. All right, so what else can we do with Markdown? Well, we can make headings. So if I come down here and let's say I want a big heading, uh, otherwise known as heading one. Heading one is the biggest heading. And to make a heading one using Markdown, you type a hashtag or a pound sign. And notice, just like with the asterisk, uh, the hashtag brings up my list of tags within TickTick -tick because that's another function that the hashtag does in TickTick. It, it's used for tags. But in this case, we're going to ignore it and just type 
hashtag, space, and then our heading. And you'll notice, once I typed the space, uh, the tags went away, and I got a little H1 over there on the left side to signify that this is a heading one. And again, it's the biggest heading. There's also heading two and heading three. And to make those, we would use two hashtags for heading two, three hashtags for heading three, And I think heading three is about as low as it goes. Um, as far as size and usability, you can type in more hashtags. Uh, I tested out six earlier, so you can type in six hashtags. And you'll notice it says H6 over there on the left side to signify heading six, but you'll also notice that the actual size and font of heading six is the exact same as heading three. So it's really not usable, in my opinion, to go any lower than heading three. Okay, so now that you've seen some basics, let me copy and paste a task description that I have pre-prepared that kind of showcases all of the options available to us. And we can kind of talk through some of the other options once we have them on the screen. All right, so here is my pre-prepared task description, which has quite a few different markdown features in here. So some of them we've already talked about. So if I click up here, I see H1 for heading one, and that was made by typing a single hashtag. Below that is heading two, so two hashtags before that. And then down here, bullet points we've talked about. You can use a dash or an asterisk, bold, if I click on the bold word, it pops up the two asterisks on either side, so you can kind of see the syntax there. Same is true with the italicized word subtask down here. You see the two asterisks on either side. All right, checkbox is something that we haven't talked about. Now, checkbox is a little bit more complicated, actually, but basically it's a bullet and then a open and closed bracket with a space in the middle. So let's talk through that one. I'm going to hit enter a couple times to get on a clean line here. So I'm going to type my dash for my bullet, space. So now I have my bullet there. I'm going to type an open bracket, space, and close my bracket. And now once I hit space, I have my checkbox. So again, that one's a little more complicated, a little more to that one, but it's a bullet. And then open bracket, space, close bracket and then you get the checkbox. And this checkbox is usable too, right? So you can come in here and you could check this. Now, what if we want to, while we're writing this, make the checkbox already checked? Well, we can do that by, instead of having the space between the two brackets, we would have an X. So let me do that one. Dash space for my bullet, open bracket, X, close bracket, and then space. And now my checkbox is checked. All right, so what else do we see in this example? Well, up here we see code, and code is a good option, especially if you're taking notes on a certain programming language, and you know maybe your notes are detailed and organized, and you want to copy and paste an example from you know a website, and you want that to be in a code format, that way it's easy to read, easy to see. So to do code, you would type a tick mark. Now, normally when I think of a tick mark, I think of an apostrophe, you know, which is kind of over here next to the quotation mark, next to my enter key on my keyboard. But in this case, the tick mark is up in the upper left corner of my keyboard uh, on the same key as the tilde. So that key has a tick mark and a tilde, and I'm going to use the tick mark for my code. And let me just type a bit of SQL code. All right, and to close this out, I'm gonna hit the tick mark again. And now you'll see my SQL is formatted in code. All right, and so that's nice. Uh, what I haven't found is that TickTick -tick can handle multi-row code. 
And most code, honestly, is multiple rows. So I'm not sure why this isn't uh, in, and maybe it's just something that I don't know. So if, if one of you out there knows how to make the code multiple rows and still format it in code, uh, please leave a comment and let us know. But let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's say I want this to be formatted more how a SQL line would be formatted. So I'm gonna put a break here. I'm going to put a break here. Now, I would like that all to be formatted as code, but you'll see as soon as I broke the line, it took the formatting away. And what I found is you pretty much have to put the tick marks on each row. So here. And even that doesn't look that great, in my opinion. It would be nice if it was a solid block of code rather than you know, three individual lines of code. So again, if you know the answer to how we can format code with multiple rows, please leave a comment. The other thing we see up here is a highlight. So 48 hours is highlighted up here. Now, I think there is a standard markdown syntax, and most of what we've talked about so far is, is pretty standard markdown syntax. Highlight is not a part of the standard markdown syntax. So if you're jumping from app to app, and you're using Markdown in different applications, the highlight syntax might be different. Um, because I know um, in Obsidian, it's two equal signs on both sides of the, of the phrase or the word that you wanna highlight. Whereas in TickTick -tick here, it's gonna be two colons. So I'm gonna type two colons. Here is my highlight. And two colons on the other side. And now I'm highlighted. But again, um, that's not standard Markdown and it may be different if you go to a different application. All right, let me just scroll down through my prepared task description. I think we've talked about most of it, except for right here is a quote. And we know it's a quote because it has a line down the left side that kind of signifies that this is a quote. And I'm gonna hit enter a couple times. And in order to make a quote, you use the right arrow. So I'm gonna hit the right arrow and this is a, oops, let me get my caps right. So again, this works like the bullet points or the check boxes where if you make one line a quote and you hit enter, it's gonna keep that quote going until you want it to stop. So if I hit enter again, it's gonna keep the quote. Now, if I want it to stop, I just hit enter again and it brings me to a blank line. So that's how that works. All right, so that covers most of what's available for markdown options within TickTick. -tick. Um, one thing I wanted to point out here is that over in the lower right corner, there's a A icon, which where if you hover over it, it calls it text format. If you click this, this brings up the text format bar. Now this may be a more usable option for you. Not, not all of us are, you know, love to use the keyboard more than the mouse. Some of us just like the easiest way to do things. And that might be pulling up this text format bar. And if we want to highlight something, uh, we may just want to come up here and highlight it with our mouse and then select the highlight option from the toolbar and then have it be highlighted. Same is true with any of the other options, right? If I want some checkboxes here, rather than try to remember that, oh, it's a, a dash space, uh, open bracket space, close bracket, I can just come down here and hit the, the checkbox, right? And, and, and that might be easier for you. So this is available down here, but the other thing is if you do want to use Markdown and you like using Markdown, but you forgot some of the syntax, for a lot of these options down here, they have the syntax. So for bold, if you hover over the bold option, you'll notice it says two asterisks, bold, two asterisks. So that lets you know the markdown syntax to use if you happen to forget it. Same is true for highlight. Uh, it lets me know two colons on either side of the word and that will get me the highlight. Uh, if I go over to italic, one asterisk. Uh, some things we didn't talk about, underline. So a tilde on both sides of the word would underline and strike through. Two tildes on both sides of the word will give us a strike through. And a horizontal line is three dashes. 
So if you can't quite remember the markdown syntax, but you want to use it, come down here and check this text format bar out. Uh, the other thing I'll do is I will link to the TickTick tick, um, official documentation on markdown, and that way you'll have that readily available as well. So there's one more thing I want to cover down here. Um, I think we covered a lot of these options, but over here is the link. So the link is a little bit tricky too, and let me just talk about this one real quick. So again, if I wanted to link, I could just click this, and it would pop up a box that would allow me to just put in the text and the link, um, and I can do it that way. But the other way to do it is markdown, and it lets me know when I hover over it that the link which is actually the text of the link, goes in the brackets. And the URL or the website address goes in the parentheses right afterwards. So let's do that. I'm going to type an open bracket. And I'm going to type, this is the text of the link. And then I'm going to close my bracket. And then right after that, no spaces, I'm going to hit an open parenthesis. And here's where I put in my URL or my website address. And let me just use um, purple.com and I'll close my parenthesis. Once I close my parenthesis, uh, that URL went away and you'll see that my link is still there. It says this is the text of the link. And if I click on this, it will obviously take me to uh, purple.com. So anyways, um, one interesting thing about this one is you can't edit this link using Markdown. So once you've created the link using Markdown, there's no way to come in here and say, well, I no longer want this to go to purple.com. I want it to go to, to something else uh, by getting into this parenthesis. You actually have to click on the little on the little chain link here, and that'll bring up this, this box that we saw before, and then you could change, you could change the link here. Uh, the other option is if you hover over it, uh, you get the option to edit the link there as well. And again, that'll bring up the box where you can change either the text or the URL. So that covers using Markdown within TickTick. -Tick. So let me know in the comments, do you use Markdown within TickTick? -Tick? Do you uh, put in these detailed task descriptions that require headers and bullet points and highlights and things like that? Probably if you're using notes, uh, let me know in the comments if you use these markdown options in your notes. Or also let me know if you if you would rather use the text format bar that's a little bit more user friendly for those of us that don't like to use the, uh, the keyboard options all the time. I'll be honest, I don't use a lot of markdown within TickTick. -tick. Um, most of what I use is probably bullet points. Um, but a lot of times my task descriptions within TickTick -tick are pretty... Um, are pretty rough. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to make detailed notes in my tasks. I'm just trying to get some some text in there of what I'm doing or some notes I grabbed from the internet or an email or, or something like that. But for any of my more organized notes, uh, I'm using Obsidian now and you use Markdown there as well. But so that's where my more organized notes are is, is over in Obsidian. So I'm not using Markdown quite as much in TickTick. -tick. But let me know if you are. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and have a good one.